everyone. Welcome to Studio Sunday with Robin and Terry. I hope you've had a good week and you're ready to take the world by storm this week. How about you, honey? I'm ready. Are you going to take it by storm? Yes, I'm going to take it by storm. Oh, no good. drizzle. It's all good. storm. Great. Good to hear. Yeah. <laughs> okay, in news, Five Years Number 8 will be in stores on Wednesday, so be sure to pick it up at your local comic shop or from our website at abstractstudiocomics.com. Uh, two more issues left after this. Pressure's on. Yeah. Okay, we had, and also we had so much interest in Terry's How to Draw book that we're going to reissue it with some new information and a lay flat binding so you can use it right on the drawing board. It should be a good reference book for you that way. It'll be available in July and it'll be $20 in comic book shops and on our website. So that should be fun. Right, good. And we'll preview it um, here before it comes out. So watch for that in probably late June. Okay, let's get on with our questions. Okay. Um, this question is from Paul Shan, who served in the military. And his question is, what type of research went into Motor Girl to assist in creating such a beautifully painful and correct depiction of both life in the military and our current conflict, and how PTSD affects those of us who live with it after having served? Well, I mostly just read um, and talk to friends who came back. Um, I, I, for some crazy reason, I like to read articles about the brain and the body and things anyway, so I was aware of that syndrome, but um, mostly uh, my friends and family who have been and come back and the stories and you listen, it adds up. So, so did you do any actual research? Uh, not pointed, like it's not like I spent five months ahead of time focusing on this material, but I did spend about a year just thinking about it and pulling from um, my entire adult life of reading about people and their stories. We've heard from a lot of people that it seems very accurate. Um, Good. And we've also had a lot of people come up and buy multiple copies to give to um, people that are still in the military or just out of the military mm -hmm. who have PTSD. So that's, um, that's a great thing. And as you all know, it's my favorite story you've ever done. So um, it's all downhill from here. Yeah. <laughs> anyway, great question, Paul. Thank, Thank you very you. much. And the next question is, you're going to love this one. Why don't you ever have strong male characters in your stories? And that's, that's it? That's the whole question? Uh-huh. Oh, boy. Okay. Well, I think I do. Um, I, your women see, characters are much stronger than your men. Yeah. Well, that was deliberate. I, I thought at the time that I started uh, Strangers in Paradise, well, we have enough stories. The, the market seemed flooded with male heroes, and I thought, well, that's a little imbalanced. Let's do something that shows the bravery and all that of these, these female characters. So that was my point starting off, and then I just kind of got on a roll with it. And next thing I knew, I had five books in a row. And then you've kind of <clears throat> become known for your women characters, and it's hard to shift. Yeah, I've noticed it will, like, even with my sketches. If I do a sketch of Kachu, it uh, gets a lot of hits. If I do a sketch of David, three people like it. <laughs> <laughs> so... David. I know. Who doesn't like David? But, uh, you well, know. Well, there are a lot of people that don't, <laughs> actually. In the popularity contest, yeah, it's it's tough. I'm not known for my male characters. So, would you ever consider putting a strong male character in one of your series? Yeah, absolutely. In the next series I'm doing, I'm actually thinking that way, that I will build a series around male character. Um, that would be fresh for me. And uh, let's hope that I get more than three people liking it. Yeah. That would be good. Yeah, that would be good. Okay. Well, do you have any? Do you have anything you want to add? Do you have any interesting news? Uh, well, the interesting news for me, of course, is you know we we announced that five years is coming to an end. Um, we also um, uh, have a lot of books in in the works this year, and we put out our travel schedule, so you can see the cons that I'm going to. They're up on our uh, social media now. We'll be at C2E2 in a couple of weeks. That's right. First C2. show out of the gate. And I've been trying to fill up the sketchbook uh, with full of sketches, uh, you know, with the original 9x12s. 
uh, pencil drawings. So let's see if I can get it filled for you for C2E2. Um, so and I have a question. Why the heck are you, do you keep rearranging the bookshelves? Because I had the plastic uh, art bin thing up there and you said move it. Oh, I just hated that. But if I move that... But you put that up two weeks ago. But yeah, if I take that off, it's Tetris. I have to change everything. Oh, you guys, you just wouldn't believe it. Yeah. At some point when he finishes fiddling with it, we'll take a picture of it. You won't be able to tell any difference. He moves stuff around, then he moves it back. The part I did is finished with is really neat looking, but this part over here is a mess. <laughs> um, okay, enough of our personal drama. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Well, you guys have a good week, and we hope to see you back here next week. Okay.